Elder Scrolls Blades, as Todd Howard put it, the new incarnation of Peter Molyneux, a pure Elder Scrolls experience. Pure Elder Scrolls experience? <laughs> Hold. Walk. Walk. Use this. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is fun. No stealth, no mage builds, no intricacies, no actual layers of gameplay. Elder Scrolls Blades is in and of itself the most stripped down, laid bare, and narrowed experience you can fathom for an Elder Scrolls game. The layers of progression are consistently stunting, unrewarding, and trying to incentivize you to spend money. Elder Scrolls Blades is less of a game you play, and it's more of a game that it plays with you, with how much you're willing to play it before you either A, put that shit down and be a sensible boy, or B, put your money into it in an attempt to get some sense of gratification the game itself refuses to provide you without the monetary transaction. Now, I'd love to say that I say that from an outside perspective, but look up there. Oh yeah, that, that's gems. You ain't finding that amount without spending money. This is a tell-all tale of a boy who's too ashamed to truly admit how much he spent on this game. We're gonna dissect just how monumentally motherfucking miserable this mobile game is. STORY! There really isn't one. You're a dude. It's the usual Elder Scrolls thing. You don't really know who you are. You get to decide. Am I this color? Am I that thing? I'm all of the above. Fuck me up! Although you can't actually make yourself look stupid, so that's a 0 out of 10 for character creation, if we're being honest. Ooh, this town's burnt down. Apparently it's where I was from. Makes sense why I went back. I was a dwarf for a while, but who was I? Why, you're a blade. You don't ever get told that by yourself. No, some old man randomly comes into your life and says, hey, you're a blade. And, and this hooded dude who speaks gibberish and is kind of interesting because he seems self-aware of your story as if he's the game itself's perspective. He quickly goes out of the story and is not brought up when any point after this, and by God was I disappointed with that. And with a bunch of moving parts, and by a bunch I mean two, you discover that all oh, the person you thought started this fire really didn't, and it was just because the statue here that got destroyed had some weird nether lich king underneath the goddamn thing that's trying to make an immortal army to just destroy the world. The, the usual boring antagonist. Oh yeah, there's an Elder Scroll in this game. Uh, yeah, they went ahead and ruined Elder Scrolls by including it in this game. It doesn't do anything. It's one of those, make sure the bad guy don't get it so you can, and you don't do anything with it. And then there's the Thalmor, they're, they're here, because they don't like people worshipping the ninth god, or eighth god, I don't know numbers. They don't like that. They're the bad guys, but they're in your town for like 50 to 70% of the game, and then you kill them. Uh... PROGRESSION! Well, I guess there's some. You got the player progression and the town progression. Player progression is kind of normal and what you'd expect. Level up, get skill points, level stamina or magicka. <laughs> Choose where to put the previously aforementioned things so you can use the abilities and spells you prefer. And then realize the whole game's really stupid and the only skills you'll really need are absorb and the dodge. And I guess the later versions of the dodge, which are essentially the same goddamn thing, proving my point. You get even to the mid-game and you realize, boy, I run out of health real fast without using them potions that really do go through my resources mad fat fast. Unless, of course, you, you, you pay to come back to life. Done that a few times. The price doubles each time until it reaches 100. Hmm. That's, uh, that's this game. So you gotta use Absorb, otherwise you don't really get much health back because your health doesn't regen outside of combat. No, it actually regens during it which you'll notice in clips like this where a bear bugged out and didn't stop blocking for 45 seconds. Look at that bar slowly move up. Why would it regen outside of combat when you're safe? I'll tell you why, because then the game would be too easy and they wouldn't be able to monetize your failure. Uh, yeah. Hmm. How to make money, that's about it. I remember when games were an art form. And then you got your dodge, because... Well, when you've you've ran out of the absorb, because it takes all your magic here, even if you level it up to two FUCKING HUNDRED! You're gonna have to avoid that thing that you can't avoid even if you block, because, oh, look at that damage when I block. Fucking shields are great. Can I level up my ability to block? Nope, nope, that's not there. Maybe when that was a perk where you could block all of the damage, yeah. This, this, this Cure Elder Scrolls experience doesn't have those interesting perks that actually allow you to build around the way you want to play. No, no, no. There's only one way to play, and they're making damn sure it's gonna be a pain in the arse, so you get closer to that point of spending money. 
And if you stop playing, they lost out on nothing. You weren't someone they could monetize. So with the skills being accounted for and the only thing really worth investing in is the perks, which don't do that much, but are kind of cool to have, I guess. You have the town progression, which is limiting how much gear you're able to get outside of the loot box system, which, oh god, we'll get to, isn't good. Each thing you build in your town, it levels up a little bit, and then you unlock all the buildings and all the features until you get to, like, level four, then you've got them all, then you're just leveling up the ability to literally just level up more. And no, not to level up the town, but the buildings, because you got to level up your smithy to level ten to make the dragon armor, and that's the best armor in the game, which you will likely never get unless you do spend money or have a lot of time. And you're really lucky. So that's the town progression. And now for my favorite part. Rewards and loot boxes. It's mostly the last one. I cannot put into words how truly unrewarding the gameplay is. That's that's gameplay for the record. This is outside of what we're even talking about. I just mean the general playing it. It feels really, really unsatisfying. The rewards themselves, however, as you'd imagine, it being a mobile game and my general tone throughout all of this, really is not there. Or at least if I'm going to be fair, it's not fair once you get to the mid-game, because you, you get through the beginning early sections and it's giving you stuff here and there and constantly giving you something for your time, and quite quickly you run out of story missions you're able to complete at your current level and then need to grind jobs. Now when you get to that point, that is when you truly get to redefine the idea of boring. So I'll admit, as I said, this is a tell-all tale of me being a fool that fell for this shit. I was sucking in during the early bits because I did enjoy somewhat what you could call the story. It's limited and it's there, but it's an Elder Scrolls experience and I'm a silly boy that thought I was going to be able to get an actual fun, truly engaging story here, so I kept going. I wouldn't call it the sun cost fallacy at this point, but yeah, I was, I was eager, I was hopeful, I was optimistic. Something you should never be on a mobile game. So by the time I got to that little wall of progression where all of my missions were four or five stars, which literally are impossible to complete unless you are reviving five to ten times depending on the mission, which will either take your valuable revive scrolls, which also multiply the cost per use in each mission, by the way, or your gems. And if you're smart, you didn't buy any, but if you're me, you did and it's gone. They're all gone because you just stupid and you played the mission you couldn't be. So with that, you go to the jobs page, which is just five jobs cycling in and out. You play one, you win or fail, it's replaced with something else. And there's a few things you can do. Go through an area, find an object, five to six of them dotted about, and if you go through the end and you miss them, your wonderful clairvoyance thing will just lead you to them, which is nice and I do appreciate, because in this game where all the things look the same, quite easy to get turned around and lost, nice to have that telling you where to go probably the only nice design feature in the whole bloody thing. And then you've got your kill this enemy type, complete the area, and my favorite, rescue townsfolk. Now I hear those question marks popping up in the comments section. Why is this your favorite? Because of the lost potential. You're in a town. The entire beginning story portion is you saving individuals to bring into your town to do things. The smithy, the workshop, the enchanting station, the alchemists. You think to yourself, saving townsfolk would be a very valuable thing. You know, like dwellers in Fallout Shelter. No. No, they didn't do that at all. No, they do nothing. It's just not even like a bonus reward. You don't even get a multiplier, it's nothing. Not a, not a single thing. Not a single thing they do. So it's my favorite because of the reminder of how little of a shit they gave about this game. Oh, don't even give me, by the way. That it's early access. I don't care. The moment you put it out with a monetization system in place, purely, purely motivated on the progression system being stunted and trying to get money out of people that want to have fun, you can fuck yourself. You don't get to use that as a shield. It's not a good defense. Just like this isn't a good defense, because everything fucking hurts me! Got the poison attack! Got your frost! I can't block this! I can't block that! I can't move out the fucking way! It's got these two abilities, or oh, he's on cooldown! Because this game has a way of making me mad with how fucking limiting and frustrating and narrowing it is, just forcing you to play it one way. Why I'm still playing it, I'm not sure. That would be the gameplay loop for you for the foreseeable future. Doing jobs over and over and over and over again, trying to level up and trying to get that gear. And here we come to the fun bit, the gear. You need better gear, naturally, to sustain more damage from the things now doing more damage, and you need better weapons to do the damage to the things that now have more health, because that's the scaling system. You know how Skyrim worked, or pretty much any game that's meant to be fun, it, it levels things 
say, five levels below you. You're never truly one-shot stomping everything because that'd be too easy. You want to keep you challenged at least a little bit, so they'll bring things up to somewhere around your level, typically below, until you get to the challenging stages. This fucking game decides to do the opposite. It will keep things overleveled. It will make sure that you are always behind them and chasing the power fantasy, never getting it. Because not only does it do that, whenever you're opening these chests, be it wooden or silver, wooden having a very small chance of giving you any useful gear, never mind the level you need it to be, and possibly be two to three below what you're currently able to make. Because here's how it works. You need to be a certain level to equip certain levels of gear. Completely understandable. Your smithy needs to be a certain level, which is linked to your town level in order to unlock it, because if your town prestige is 4, it can only get to 4, which only unlocks you a certain actual grade of gear, so everything needs to be going up steadily at the same rate. Which, without spending money, is quite a challenge given the sheer amount of stuff you require to do all of this. <clears throat> you very rarely ever get bundles of resources that you actually need. Copper is a rarity that you never realized you would have sought after so much for so long. And never mind the amounts you need for the singular upgrade, the amount of things you need to upgrade to be able to upgrade it on top of that is monumental. It's a money sink and a resource sink. It takes your gold and your resources. The easiest way to level up your town is to build houses, but every time you build a house, the gold price skyrockets, as well as the general resources for it also going up a smidge. <laughs> oh, and by the way, it, just in case you were running out of resources or you did feel like, oh, I just need that thing, it'll sell you it when you level up or attempt to at the very least. Hey, you want to buy an artifact? You want the Mace of Molag Ball? I bought that, I'm ashamed to say it. I did, I I went and dosh darn done it. Didn't mean to say dosh, but hey, it was an exchange of my money for the shame of something that actually made me happy because I finally got a nice thing. It was, it was a fair flub, that was, that was a Freudian slip. And it won't just sell you that when you're leveling up with whatever it's trying to sell you at that point. Maybe it's armor, maybe it's a weapon, maybe it's just a bundle of little things. Crafting materials, for example. No, 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 no. When you level up your town, this is the big one. It will sell you an Imperial Resources Pack. Maybe it isn't verbatim, but whatever the fuck. It will try and sell you a whole bunch of resources, which if you do buy them, will typically get you to the next level. It usually gives you just enough. So if you buy that once, you think, whoa, I, I just leveled up so quickly, that's awesome. Or do you, oh, oh look, there it is again. Maybe I should do it. I can get to the next level and I won't be just time-gated this entire time, and I can access the rest of the game! Spoilers! The rest of the game is nothing other than allowing you to get the later gear. Now, obviously that sounds good, because it's supposed to. It's supposed to make your head go, oh, but I want the good gear. But there is no gameplay provided with it. It's just bigger numbers for your character to match the bigger numbers for the enemies. Not new enemies, not new character stuff. Just same old combat with the same old enemies. They're just a little bit bigger with maybe shinier items to match yours. Don't think that them resource whoring you was just to keep you playing. It's not. It's to try to get you paying. And should you do it once, they are doing their damnedest to try to get you hooked. So you can go all the way to town level 10. Then it's capped off and you're done and they would have gotten quite a large sum from you if you fell for it. And I did that. So consider all that that I've just said that you're needing to do to be able to make this possible for you to craft this gear, and then remember that this game, during all of this, is rewarding you with free leather and steel which you outleveled god knows how many hours ago. So while you're grinding toward this goal of just being able to bloody build Dwarven, which isn't all that good, but hey, it's what you need for the level you're at, the game will keep breadcrumb trailing you things for a level you were so long ago. Which, as you'd imagine, would slowly bring you to the general conclusion that, hey, maybe if I just buy one of those chests there, I might get something that'll boost my power level. Ooh, wouldn't that be fun? Only it wouldn't really be fun, because even then, it very rarely gives you the things above your level, never mind yours. And if you're lucky enough to get something super califragilistic, expialidocious, don't forget that in a short hour or so of you possibly actually enjoying your experience being a little bit overpowered, you will quickly hit that wall you were just at, because it doesn't move far away and down the road. That wall, that block of progression, is constantly in your face. 
Now, I know, I'm sure, there are some people saying, well, isn't this to be expected in a game that's all about this progression? I don't know about you, but the games that I play tend to feel rewarding and engaging and interesting and constantly providing some level of an experience that's enjoyable and justifying the time put in to get to the next step. Maybe watching it is actually more fun than playing it, but I can assure you that grinding the same jobs in what I believe, top of my head, are just the same four recycled locations with generic, randomly generated levels just segmented together that aren't that long or rewarding or interesting because it's just enemy spam. Each job, again, rewarding you very little for it. It's just not fun. And that's what a game's supposed to be. I truly get more enjoyment from generic idle games, where it's just a number going up simulator with different JPEGs attached to it depending on the game you play. I have more fun with that because the game's up front with me. I know what it is going in. It's basic, but it's just mental gratification for the sake of it. This game teases you with the potential of that gratification and will never provide it. Not often enough for someone to truly be satiated with it, unless you are making it your life's goal to spite the game, to not spend a penny while making it to the end. All in all, this is not an art form trying to sell itself to an audience. This is a product trying to be bought. CONCLUSION! I honestly do regret thinking this game would be different, because in my head I thought to myself, hey, it'll be like an Elder Scrolls Fallout shelter. Say what you will about those games, I actually did enjoy those. Again, it was just a generic number going up simulator in a different form with JPEGs, whatever. It wasn't exactly what you'd call an idle game, but there was... It, it felt more upfront and honest with what it was. It wasn't trying to present itself as a pure Elder Scrolls experience. I'm, of course, quoting the wrong series, so I'd hope it wouldn't be presenting itself as that. It's the wrong game, Todd. And my biggest problem, honestly, is the fact that it releases itself in what it calls early access, as if to give it some level of deniability and a shield of protection from any criticism that it do, 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 so desperately deserves. Because it's a cat's grab. It is doing its best to strip away everything you love about Elder Scrolls and just packaging it away in these little boxes that it wants you to buy. So yeah, with them doing that, with them making this an entire experience to try and tug on your heartstrings, on your brain, for you just crying out desperately to try and get the Elder Scrolls experience you were promised by paying for it, by getting legendary artifacts from the series that you know and love, Mehrun's Razor, Molag Ball's Bashing Boy. It's all very pointless, it's all very not interesting. But by the way, Mehrun's Razor, that super cool, amazing thing that had like a 1% chance of insta-killing whatever you were fighting, shall we read the perk description? Disclaimer, does not work on 90% of the enemies in the game. Oh, good. Oh, I can't even have fun with this if I'm lucky enough to get it. Thanks. The last two things from Bethesda are Fallout 76 and this. Might I close this with the way that I opened it? Elder Scrolls Blades is not a game that you get to play. Nay, tis a game it plays with you to see how long you can last and tap and scroll through the game before you fade, kneel, fall, and cave in and give them your money. The only thing this Blades ended up doing is making me cut my losses with the faith I once had in Bethesda. I much preferred it when you bugged my consoles with ragdoll glitches and silly noises than when you bugged my wallet to rattle out a few more coins.